All right, welcome back to Getting Sober, dot, 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 again. My name is Jay, and today we're going to ask, are you actually addicted to alcohol? <laughs> but first, I wanna say thank you for being here. All right, let's get started. <laughs> I always wondered, am I really addicted to alcohol? I mean, after all, who genuinely likes the taste of alcohol? I know taste is subjective and some of you are all like, I love the taste of Chardonnay. <laughs> okay, okay, don't cancel me. But I had to really ask myself because after years of constructing false realities and continuing to make room for alcohol, I always looked past the headaches, the hangovers, the horrible food decisions <laughs> and all the bad decisions. Was I actually just addicted to avoiding my responsibilities and escaping? Escaping rent, utilities, a car payment, car insurance, health insurance, a phone bill, buying food, prepping food, making food, and having a little to no money left over to care about saving for retirement. Because if you're a millennial like me, <laughs> we laugh at the idea of having social security benefits. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'll be fine. Going through the motions of life every Monday through Friday and saying things to coworkers like live in the dream or <laughs> another day in paradise and getting a kick out of the deadpan honesty of my inner child that just eventually gave up and would respond with things like, well, I'm here, ain't I? <laughs> I was addicted to not taking life seriously. Does the thought of taking life seriously give you cold feet? Yeah, me too. That's why I drank alcohol <laughs> for 18 years. I didn't have real fulfillment in my life. I felt empty and to fill that void, I relied on the temporary pleasure almost daily that I got from alcohol. I got addicted to feeling good. And when you don't have anything in your life that produces those feelings in a meaningful way, it's easy to become addicted to alcohol or substances which will artificially stimulate you on demand. That's why as soon as work was over, I was looking forward to the only part of my day that I believed was going to bring me any kind of satisfaction. My first drink, and then my second drink, and then sometimes two drinks at once, and then a road drink on the way to the bar to drink, and then playing pool for drinks while I was drinking in between drinks. Wait a minute, where was I? Oh yeah, drinking. <laughs> you see, I was treating every upcoming week as if I were getting married to my responsibilities and subsequently treated every weekend like I was throwing my own bachelor party, not unlike a furniture liquidation sale. Everything must go. I knew at some point I was going to have to and hoped I would want to take life seriously. And when I did, if I did, that I wouldn't have the time or desire to look back. I mean, I will look back sometimes. But I would be unwavered to my commitment. <laughs> Even though I knew that some days would be less than ideal. Some days would make me ask questions like, what's the point? And some days I would experience severe fear of missing out. I knew, hoped, hoped that when that day came, I, would stay the course. Just not today, <laughs> probably Monday, or the day after my birthday, or New Year's day, not Eve. <laughs> no, no, no. I could go back to drinking anytime, just like I did before, again, again, and dot, 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 again. Were you a weekend warrior? There I'd be clocking out every Friday, texting, Everybody that I knew, what are you doing? What are you doing tonight? Or what's the move? Or what, I'm still in the Capitol building without face masks on? Then of course, Saturday was still a perfectly good day to also go as hard as possible because work was a whole two days away. <laughs> and Sunday, we can rest. But instead, we would take it easy with some Bloody Marys or some sangria or maybe some wine or whatever else wasn't too strong. Oh, who am I kidding? Let's do shots. <laughs> One debaucherous weekend after the next because frankly, I wanted an excuse. 
Everyone else was pulling their productivity punches Monday through Friday anyway. Everyone was seemingly coming to work hungover on Monday and couldn't wait till the clock hit five because, well, it's Monday, that's why. <laughs> How could I be expected by anyone else to achieve any more in life when everyone else around me also set the bar so low? Choose your company wisely. Still, a part of me believed that I would make it out alive, but I had no proof. I had no proof that I'd get a better job or have a better relationship. My friends were my friends and it wasn't like I could get a different family. And I already went to college as much as I could stand being there. Six years, no degree. So changing careers was more of a matter of being hired as an unskilled laborer with student debt still accruing interest. Working a job that had nothing to do with my education, feeling like I was worth more and pouting because I wasn't given that raise or that management position. If only I could manage not to be a hot mess for more than three to six weeks, then maybe they'd see my potential. But then again, who was I kidding? I was a rebel and my cause, a good time. Work hard, play hard, and saying things like, I'm not hurting anyone, so why should it matter? I show up, I do my job, I pay my bills, and I'm getting nowhere. I'm getting older. When you find yourself at an existential crossroad, there's two signs. One sign says future with a question mark on it. And the other one leads to rock bottom. And of course, everyone's rock bottom looks different. Maybe your rock bottom is having to spend a few weeks living in your car while you get back on your feet. Or maybe your rock bottom is having your company file for bankruptcy and liquidating your assets like your vacation home. Alcohol made me not give a shit. It made me not care. It made me feel like all that mattered was finding others like me who are also choosing to put it off another day. Alcohol made me lean into procrastination. Alcohol made it okay to worry about it tomorrow. And then one day you realize that drinking alcohol is not unlike charging your past to your future's credit card. We keep charging our ambitions to future us. And then when future us wakes up, future us looks at the new updated to-do list of life and has a panic attack. <laughs> a panic attack big enough that we feel like we need a drink, dot, 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 again. Remember when you were a kid and you had trouble going to sleep because life was so exciting? The world didn't make you jaded yet. Nobody called you Steve Aoki to your face. <laughs> but now you can't wait to go to sleep because if you're lucky, you won't dream about how far behind you are on your bills. And maybe you'll just have enough of a semi-productive dream like, I had a dream that I did some laundry. When did our dreams and our lives become so depressing? When did we give up on being an astronaut and then set the bar lower and lower until we let ourselves be envious of people making it to middle management? When did we trade our ambitions for half off domestics and $2 wells? When did we stop caring about ourselves and wondering why we couldn't find the partner that we felt like we deserved, but did we? Didn't we get what we deserved? Or did we shut that bit of truth up too with another drink? To trade our life substance for another round of substance. Maybe today will be the day. Maybe today was the day that you started your journey. But chances are it'll be tomorrow. And who are we kidding? It might as well wait till Monday. But then again, do I really want to miss out on those Halloween parties? And then there's Thanksgiving, of course, and Christmas and New Year's Eve. Well, there's always next year. Did you know that the highest alcohol sales are at the end of the year with the largest spike in sales coming in December? Sobriety doesn't have to start on a special day. It doesn't have to be on a special occasion. And it certainly doesn't have to be on a cold day in January when nothing is open and all there is to do is stay inside, watch football and be reminded by Clydesdale horses and patriotic mascots what a clever marketing company has phrased as America's favorite pastime. Pouring in slow motion out a well-lit frosty bottle into an even frostier mug. Weekends are never gonna stop coming. Neither will Mondays, nor two birthdays, or holidays, or anniversaries. You're gonna get into arguments, makeups, breakups, 
new jobs and old bosses, life is coming and you need better tools. What is the root of your anxiety? What is the cause of this depression? How are you going to get ahead? Find more time and make strides to being a better version of yourself tomorrow than you woke up today. This is a call to action. This is your future. This is your best life waiting to be realized. And you're in good company here with us at getting sober dot 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 again. If you care about your sobriety journey, whether it's been one day, one week or one year, consider taking a bigger step and hitting the join button down below to help us continue to help people like yourself to start their sobriety journey. And if you also care about other people starting their journey who are just like you, but out there lost and looking for content just like this, then please give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment for either me or anyone else in the comment section down below. And if you're looking for our last two videos, they'll be coming up on the screen in about 10 seconds. And with that, I want to wish you good luck on your sobriety journey, and I will see you in the next video.